So um, uh, this is this is quite an undertaking, right? So I don't want to slightly terrify you all. Um, but in VR, we stopped talking about uh, kind of scenes and we talk about faces. Uh, we made ourselves, uh, we made our job slightly easier uh, for this to try and understand how this would work. Is that we set everything in a square. Um, someone actually paid us to uh, uh, animate East London, which is like unheard of. Um, but uh, as I said, we wanted this experience where we wanted to tell this film, but we wanted to allow people to kind of look uh, in different areas um, and discover new things. But we still don't want them to kind of lose um, the story that we want to tell. Uh, that's a massive uh, undertaking, right? Something really difficult. So the first thing um, we, we kind of uh, created, really, uh, uh, is this. And um, this, is, this is pain. Um, so Daniel left is location. Okay, and across the top is time. So um, uh, in the previous slide, you can see we split the square up into kind of different areas. Um, that's how we, we have to craft this. So um, the yellow line running down the center, that's your like two minute short film. Okay, so that, that, that's the film I want to tell. That, that's what I want you to see. Um, and if you do everything that I want, uh, and you, you follow and, uh, you know, it's like game design. You basically fall for all my little clues and devices and you do what I want. You're going to kind of follow that yellow line. Um, and that's kind of the best experience um, that the director has wanted you to follow. Um, however, you know, th this is a medium uh, of interactive storytelling. And it's also a 360 space where I can look and do whatever I want. So I don't want to punish you for that. And I think that's, that's our largest job we have as filmmakers is to work out how to not punish you for looking somewhere that you looked. Um, the problem right now for me is that this takes a long time. Uh, it's not something that you can <laughs> put together in a week or two. Uh, you, can make you, know, you can make the pinata pretty quick, but when you try to think about how to tell uh, a, a quite complex story and then you want to tell all the kind of sub-narratives to it, 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 it takes some thinking. So, um, and I'm running out of time and uh, apparently I have to run, which is crazy. Um, but uh, let me just like, give you an example of this. So the first thing we wanted you to do is to make sure that you see that she gets these sunglasses. Uh, it's a big narrative point. Um, and if you kind of miss that, then it's kind of a shame. So you can kind of see, uh, uh, this is kind of hopefully you can't read it all. <laughs> Probably the idea. <laughs> um, at the top it says empty street. The idea is that um, you won't, if you try to look elsewhere, there's not much to look at, right? I kind of want you to stay on the, fo on the focus on, on, on this postman that you see at the start. Now the postman, uh, he gets all the music, right? So the music's playing and you follow him. If you decide to look away, you're gonna see an empty street and the music will quieten down a little bit, okay? Because I know what you're doing. So what happens, um, uh, and I'm gonna have to dive in and do, uh, and kind of read one. So uh, Ella's front door. So if you stare at Ella's front door, say 50 seconds. Um, now le let's presume that Ella's left the scene now, but you're still, st you're still gonna st uh, look in that direction. Um, it says, Ella's dad out on the balcony with a cup of coffee admiring the good weather, okay? So I've rewarded you for looking, right? Something's happened, okay? And this is coming from YouTube, it's pretty mental. Um, now if you stay uh, and, you uh, and you continue for the next 15 seconds, it says, Ella's mum has joined dad on the balcony. They're opening up some pack of sausages and bacon for a barbecue breakfast, okay? Now um, th this is, for me, this is where it gets super interesting where um, I am rewarding you, I'm giving you something to look at, but um, at the same time, it's not interesting enough that hopefully you're, you're not gonna come back to the main thread. Um, I'm obviously still in control of this, so you're not missing anything. Once you make your way back to Ella, then the story uh, continues. Um, and then my last example, uh, and I'm, I'm afraid I can't show you, so I just, you'll have to imagine it. Um, there's a scene where Ella walks across the road to an ice cream van. Um, if you decide not to look at the ice cream van here and look here, you'll see a, um, a little cat and he's kind of got like a pouncing position. And if you kind of look slightly to the right, you'll see that there's a bird in front of the, the cat and you, you realize what, uh, what, what's about to happen. Um, and that kind of goes on for like five seconds or so. And then if you still remain there, uh, the cat basically pounces uh, on the bird, but the bird takes off. And this is, th this is the big moment for me. Where does the bird fly? The bird comes at you over your head and then lands back onto the uh, ice cream van. Um, and the way it's built is that it's, it's pretty hard for you not to want to follow the bird. But the minute you land back on the ice cream van, boom, the story starts playing again because you're looking at the protagonist and things get going again. So 
Um, hopefully that's kind of a good example of, of, of you know, um, where, we're, where we're headed um, and what we can do. Um, it definitely requires like thinking, it, it, it's kind of a brain fart. <laughs> um, but if someone uh, gives you some time and uh, a bit of money to c explore it, then you th th then there's some really interesting possibilities. Um, and as I said, this is coming out soon. Um, and that's me. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Luke. Uh, I just heard that you, it's a big bummer, you have to run. Oh. So you're playing, so we, we We'll miss you yeah. for the panel discussion. Maybe um, people are leaving, so thank you very much for being here. Looking forward to see you uh, hopefully in October. Where in China? Next panel speaker is, I think, well known to the Swiss audience. It's Samuel Schwartz, a movie and a <laughs> film director, uh, theater and movie director, uh, known especially for his colder movie, uh, which he created uh, with 400 Asa, a colder movie which premiered uh, last year at the Neuchatel International Film Fantastic Film Festival and will be released in September this year. The VR experience he is planning to do is set in the Polder universe where the Polder witch is attacking the shooting of the movie. Yeah, uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, the whole story universe so I can then uh, go on to the 360 degree version we are uh, constructing at the moment. Uh, Polder is a story world, uh, uh, some of you know it already, and uh, I think it's important that I uh, tell you a little bit about it so then I can change to the, to the 360 degree topic. Um, of course, this is a transmedia story universe, and um, VOA, uh, re also the uh, virtual reality, is now one of our platforms. We have a film, we have Alps and Ice reality game, we have an app, we have a web presence, and we're uh, making research about storytelling and we have also a board game and the virtual reality it grows out of the topic i think it's quite uh, logic <laughs> when you see the story how it how we created it that now we end up in in virtual reality um Oh, I, I will not talk to you now about the what a folder is. A folder is a topic from the fantasy literature. It's a story uh, magic world like uh, Shire or Oz and the land of the Smurfs. These are uh, topics. Um, we have this uh, NeuroX company. This NeuroX company creates a little bit like Nexus uh, uh <laughs> experiences. They started as a, uh, as a hippie commune in the, in the Alps. Then they changed to Berlin. Then they started to create uh, immersive experience for a hipster audience. Then they created the Red Book, and the Red Book is the absolutely power gadget, the best gadget uh, ever existed. But it's very, very dangerous to play it. Of course, that's a science fiction story, and uh, the users get lost. Um, as a and what we uh, made, uh, we have characters, of course. We have characters, we have a hero, we have Zelda, she's the bad, um, the evil CEO from NeuroX. We have the hero, Marcus, the chief creator, the CEO creator of the, of the stories they create. We have Yuko, the, 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 the wife of the hero. We have her son. We have the, the, the other CEOs of the company. Um, also this uh, Richard Branson type on the right and uh, the Julius Assange uh, type on the, on the left. We have the witch. The witch is the hybrid of all um, female and male dreams. Uh, she's a very dangerous character. She's a character from the dream. She's a mix of several myths. And we have the Fritz Stauffacher. He's the crazy one. Uh, and the users, of course, this the users are a very important force. The users fight for the rights, they have ambivalent relationships to the, to the company. Um, so 
this were the topics, um, uh, these were the characters, and then we have uh, several topics, gamification, uh, of course, the layouts of different services and companies, psychotropical patterns or service, escapism, transhumanism, that's also great, great news, of course, as inspired by the uh, philosopher, uh, online, offline longing, of course, female smart power versus patriarchy, patriarchy and state against market, I think every one of us knows this topic. Uh, we have a specific target audience, of course we made now some uh, experiences with, this, with the audience, we were at festivals, we won some awards, uh, we, we know a little bit who likes the story world, um, we made a lot of prototypings, we and we did then a movie, and um, of course, this is the Mona Lisa of the project. Um, so uh, as I said, we won some awards. Uh, maybe you can, we can watch the trailer, and uh, I will show you something else. We created the app, a uh, app, the uh, storytelling app, also very important, but I will not focus that now at the moment. We made research, and then at September 2000. Uh, at the 1st of September we will go into the movie theater and that's the experience we're gonna do we want to show uh, can we use that multiple view no sorry some help why is ah it's seven or it's ten I want to end up at, uh, uh, at 360 degree on the VR experience. Maybe I am uh, talking about this. Oh, not now. Sorry. Uh, so this is a little bit the myth of our 360 degree experience. What the people will experience at the movie theater, they will later on experience in a movie theater. Wer hat es gestern ein schales Gefühl nach einer Spielerunde am Rechner? Wer hebe die Hand? Hey, this is Zelda. This is my boss here at Miracle. This is one of our special promo videos. Take a look. Aber bei dem Spiel, das wir lancieren werden, ist die subjektiv im Spiel verbrachte Zeit viel länger als die Zeit. Our immersive experiences melt the boundaries between technology and nature. These are images from one of our special events, the Polar Night Cruise. Cosplayers, friends, and a hand-picked group of experts from the fields of social sciences, artificial intelligence, 
and digital world. We create tailor-made experiences for each city we visit. Two years ago, we launched our urban games in Berlin and Zurich, Switzerland. Our world consists of creatures, magical characters, and hidden mysteries. This alternate reality, part of our game, provides users with the ultimate experience. Our mysteries play out on different levels of reality. This is another part of our online game. In a world of black and white. This is Ryoko. She's one of our gamers. Our urban games lead to mystical and magical places. Lost spaces within you and me. The polders. The riddles are complex. Sometimes, only hate, pain, and even suffering can get you to the next level. Here in San Francisco, we will provide a memoir that will lead you into magical worlds. These amazing images were created with infrared technology and special lenses. Crazy Swiss dudes. So if you also want to experience something amazing and new, join us. We are waiting for you. Folder. Become a game. So, as that we will show the film um, in the movie theater, and of course actors will appear. There will be very specific things happening in the movie theater, and that's why we are creating now a 360 degree experience of that experience the people will have in 1st of September. That means um, you, as a user, will sit like him there, sit in an audience, uh, sit in a movie theater, there will be people around you like him, like him. Um, there will be a, a speech of Zelda, of the CEO of Neuro X, and she will explain to you that you are like a test user of a specific test that you can walk, uh, walk around. She will explain the rules, she will say, when you uh, see to the exit uh, signs, then something will happen. When you watch at him, something will happen, or to him. Then the movie will start, and uh, then you are free. You can watch the film, or you can watch to him. When you watch to him, something happens. He turns his head. Of course, the more and more the film goes on, it mixes. At a specific point, you can. Uh, there will be a like a here, will be something like a, a window suddenly. And then you can look to the window, and then you get um, beamed into that specific side room. There's a cabin there, a mysterious cabin. Suddenly you are sitting in a cabin. You are directly in the film. The witch attacks you, or there will be a like a there will be like a, a panel, like here, and you will sit there. And suddenly the the the, the specialist will say, "Yeah, there is one thing." Uh, the users never do, they never watch behind, then you watch behind and there's a witch waiting there. Uh, and then you, when you want, you can come back to the audience, to the room and go on watching the film. That means in the end you, you, you don't have a film, you have more like a, an experience and you can do, uh, have interactive elements or uh, 
Um, but of course, we use the, 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 the fact that uh, Netflix films are already uh, working with that movie theater. When you watch a Netflix film on a Oculus, you are sitting in a movie theater. And we, of course, we work with that specific experience the people already have. And then we, we go on and uh, work on that specific um, desired second reality you have in this, in this movie theater. And of course, when we can sell then the film on Steam, and the people will know that they have, will have a specific additional experience in this movie theater. And of course, this specific additional experience is a story of its own. Then they, they will buy the film maybe from Steam. And so um, this is a little bit the, the, the goal. And but uh, just for the, technic the technical aspect, we have two experiences in it. There is one stream, that means one film, additional film to the film. But then we have one additional interactive experience you just you you only can ex ha have when you have an uh, uh, ATC wi that means um, you have you can choose then when you want to join this additional experience then you have to buy uh, ATC wi but of course uh, the the interaction level will be very high also when the when it's just a stream just a linear 360 degree stream so this is a little bit the the, the 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 thing, and I think we should go uh, go on now together. Yeah, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Daniel. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not so sure you should have told the audience what is already like happening in your additional movie experience. Uh, yeah, uh, of course we. W what the people wi will have as an experience in the 360 degree world is a little bit like the simulation of what they really uh, experience in the movie theater already. The uh, of course, we, we, c we, we are not able to, to that the, the, the witch cannot fly around in, uh, in our conventional presentation. Yeah. Of course, in the 360 degree version, that would be possible. So I'm uh, sitting on the hot chair, but if who will be open to any questions. Uh, do you want to, somebody want to ask a question? <laughs> okay, so maybe maybe I, I launch a discussion and, and you just drop in, you raise your hand. If you want to say something, there is a microphone in the room. I want to introduce you first to our crowd of the new bridge has to run up. Who is actually, besides Dominic, the two guys who have actually experience in 360, so I was very keen on, on the discussion about the whole thing. But uh, you have seen now four different approach on VR, and, and you also got it that it's a, it's a rather young medium, and you're still struggling with uh, describing what you're doing, uh, finding the right comparisons, and, um, and we always take the starting point of the movie. And I think that's something I wanted to address first with uh, Dominic, um, because you, you said, okay, we started out, we wanted to do a movie, and then you said, okay, let's do a 360 degree uh, experience. Um, what did you have to change fundamentally in telling a story in 360 comparing to a movie? What is like the main thing you had to think about? Rethink think about it. Chris, do we have a, a microphone for Dominic? Um, well, uh, basically, the we we had to rethink the the whole <coughs> like the structure itself of the story we wanted to tell. We tried to figure out um, what is it underlying the story that we wanted to tell that we wanted to um, experience the audiences and then we took that let's say that emotion and we tried to figure out okay how can we tell this emotion in a space so we tried to to deconstruct all the everything I mean, when we when we when we tell a movie, we we write a story, we have a conflict, and we have our like the very the very basis of what we want to tell and what is being represented on a visual level, and we 
we we tore everything back down to that to that um, founding thing that we wanted to tell and try to retell that with with all the opportunities that we have in the space that we're given. So so it was kind of a um, yeah. Just as, as Luke said, we try to get rid of telling in rectangles. We just try to lose all that. Because when we think about stories, um, it, it very often comes in these rectangles because it's just how we grew up. We know that this is the movie and how it looks like. And um, yeah, it was just a very fundamental um, question for us is how to tell the same thing uh, in another way. Rid of the editing process, you know, you you didn't, you have, you do not have anymore the possibility to guide the viewer or the spectator through the editing. So you have like a 360 degree space where everybody could look around like he wants. But how? What was your thinking about how do you guide in a way the the point of view of the the person immersed uh, in the telling? How do you how does I know when I'm in this experience in which direction I should watch and why? Um, with the the good thing that came with Sauna is that the the setting itself was pretty forgiving in that in that way because we it is set in space and we decided to go for a very um, reduced visual style in terms of color. So so it was pretty much black and white and gradients in between and then we had the the displays that would bring in colors and all that stuff so we it was um, a good way for us to just work with visual cues like these color for instance um, just to highlight things um, and in space um, for example we it is a huge black vastness so we we really use moving objects the movement of the of uh, the spaceship um, or the movement of, of, of other objects to, to, to steer the attention. We used lighting. Um, it's very dark, so light was always a good um, like trigger to, to, to lure the attention of the, of the audience. Um, sound is uh, sound in VR is another very, very powerful tool that you can use to uh, to steer the attention. Um, w this is the one thing that I, <laughs> that I, um, that is really missing um, with with Sona. We didn't have any time to like get into all the the technology behind behind sound. So we basically have just a stereo sound. But as soon as you go into uh, spatial sound, which means that you can position the sound in the room, um, and even even. Better than that, if, if you work with binaural sound, sound which is in the process of, of um, recording it, it is, it's recorded with a, a some sort of a dummy head and the microphones are inside. So you really get the um, the sound that you hear via it only works with headphones, but this kind of sound um, really feels like the sound that you receive in your ears. It's, it's, it's strange to describe, but you it is really a very much more intimate than than um, than stereo sound, for example, and and these are pretty powerful aspects. You can create direction in either sound in space um, or like binaural audio that creates a very like a perspective, like a user perspective. You immediately get the the feeling. Oh, this is my perspective. This is the sound that I hear in my in my perspective. We couldn't use that in sauna, but it's very 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 powerful. Um, another thing that I mean, you have in every headset, you have your field of view. You have your, I don't know, 110 degrees or whatever that you see in every direction. And we implemented that. Uh, so we have, there's a, this one scene when you arrive at a very interesting object near the end and you send out this UV probe um, and it goes off into the distance and it is uh, it's, it's covering everything that is there, but it's too far away to really see what's going on. So we have just right in the corner of your eye there is a monitor, and it and it um, comes on, and there's the live feed from from the probe, and you just see that that you know shimmer of light as it comes on, and like this, we try to implement different different aspects um, of of 
here in the country um, to a certain area, area. Sadly, we lost that thing because on the GK1, on the very first developer kit for the Oculus Rift, um, the field of view was actually wider than you have on the, on the newer ones and on the, on the latest models. So now the monitor is gone and we just have to uh, be lucky and look that way. <laughs> Is everything in animation? So you're like the, the master of the sonar universe. Um, uh, Martin, you work more like in real action. And you made a really interesting comparison. You said you, you, we shouldn't talk about movies anymore. We should more talk about the theater experience. Um, how do you intend uh, to continue with this, with your tweakers and, 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 and your experimenting on new VR experiences. What did you learn uh, with the short movie A Gang Girl Rule, and uh, which might be the next project in real action uh, with new theater ideas? Um, well, just to to uh, express one sentence, what I, what I heard. Um, the odd, the for example, what we our new project is we did. Uh, an app project, uh, it's, a, it's an app, uh, but uh, produced with the Zurich Tourism and University of St. Gallen. And, uh, and you go through Zurich uh, uh, on the basis of literary text, uh, and uh, for example, a novel which uh, plays in Zurich, and we produce the whole uh, moving images and the, and the, and the, and the moving images uh, content of the, of the app. And we also produce 360 degree content with it, and with an own uh, mic, with it, which is a pilot or a prototype uh, mic of Sennheiser, and they have uh, four different mics. This is one mic, but has uh, four different mics in uh, in the in the mic. It's a 360 degree mic, and with four different channels, so you really can uh, can work with it. With uh, with uh, and uh, in real production uh, 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 circumstances, so with the real uh, uh, audio you find in the street, but you get the 360 degree uh, audio. So this is uh, one project, and in, in autumn we are producing a new uh, thing with our fifth semester. They are, um, I, I, I don't know what they are doing because they are think about it with a, with a German producer from. From Berlin, uh, but but sure we will we will uh, do it's it's more um, that maybe it's more a documentary side because now we did the fifth semester, but the next uh, thing we would like to experiment is how would a maybe a TV presenter leads us through a um, well, well you know this this uh, the, the, the example would be visiting the Syrian refugee camp is for example yeah and and documentary. Uh, doing a documentary about it. And, and that's always, I think it's always about spaces and locations, and maybe also about being in spaces and locations you are not able to visit. Uh, maybe in uh, St. Peter's Cathedral, but on top of St. Peter's Cathedral, and sitting there and, 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 and somebody will explain us uh, maybe the history uh, of the building. And, and you never could be there in, in, in real, but you, you, you can be there uh, in, a, in a documentary uh, with an, in a VR documentary. Um, and the third thing is that we want to open a master program with the theater and film people at Sennheiser. And that's what, what you, uh, uh, that's, that's, that here we have come stage and acting and dancing together and film and virtual reality together. And we would uh, like to have uh, master students who come with projects where they combine maybe dance and stage and virtual reality and film to tell a story or to create an artistic experience. Uh, yeah, may that's that's what we are doing, and we, we would like to have three to five uh, different master students starting in autumn of 2020. Yeah. Do you define the, the, the quality of the story is defined by the space? That makes me think really interesting to go back to uh, some of projects where the, the VR experience is set in a theater, in a movie theater, in a real theater, I don't know. But um, let, 
let's 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 try to dive into this magical poison universe. Um, I, uh, as a spectator, I have my seat, and I see the polar moon. And then something is going on around me. So how do I know what happened? And how do I know where I should look, where something interesting is happening? Or do you don't care, you just have like several spots where something is happening and everybody can choose his own path? Okay. Um, in the first 30 minutes, it's not happening so much. Also, there are just small things. You know, there are uh, leaves falling down from the sky. There's also leaves fall down here. So that you get a little bit immersed by the smaller things. And the more and more it goes on, stranger things happen. And, and of course, suddenly Fritz is entering the movie theater uh, and he's uh, Mac Rias. And of course, then you turn around. Of course, then the film stops. And then they come and sit beside you and then they have a, a small scene fitting to the s topics of the films, of course. And then the, the, the female character makes, let's go on, and then the movie goes on. And the more and more it goes on, of course, this backstory or this, this side story gets more and more important. Um, and in the end of the film, the characters are also sitting in something like a movie theater. Then it comes really strange. And uh, this is one possibility to, to make the experience. And the other one is that you have this interactive thing. When you watch as this specific uh, spectator si who is sitting there, then something, a mini game is uh, in stage. You can choose around in the movie theater also. Also, that means you have the choice. You can watch the film uh, and you can get the uh, shocked by the effects or you can go into the interactive element. It's like a steering room in a game. It comes from the game. So when, when you are uh, always comes back and there is this steering room. And you uh, I know that from the game. But it sounds yeah. awfully complicated for me uh, because you have so many different possibilities. Um, sh do I have to read a manual before yeah, I, I go into the polder experience or is it like you, you try to recreate like real life where you have an intuitive reaction to what is happening. Also, Zelda at the beginning is making something like a manual. Yeah. Uh, also she's uh, her, perf her, her first performance is the manual. Yeah. So mm -hmm. she, she it's yeah. like an introduction and yeah. she explains what happens and what's going yeah. on. Dominic, you did something similar to that. You have like a um, like it's it we are used to it in in games as well. We have like a, a, a short movie before the experience start to to get the setting and and know the world. Um, do you think in future it will be possible to get rid of it and 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 just jump into the experience because people maybe are getting used to it? Yeah, I think I think it's already happening that um, we don't need these tutorials anymore with certain uh, types of experiences. Um, and again, there's a pretty big difference um, between what I did in, 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 in Sona, which is this linear experience that you don't have these interactive elements um, and an interactive experience. You have more control, let's say, o o over it o when you have the interactive aspect. Um, but especially with these aspects, I think if you, if you look at stuff like um, uh, Tilt Brush, for example, the, the painting tool for the Vive, or um, the, the Oculus Touch uh, sandbox game, where, you, where, you, where it's two people wearing, um, e each wearing an Oculus, and they both ha have the, the touch controllers for Oculus. And you just have a table with tennis balls and you know ping pong stuff and, and all the stuff lying around. Um, Obviously, there is no narrative in there, but as soon as people put on the glasses, they start, there's a very intuitive thing happening. People, because it feels so, because it feels so natural and the tracking of the devices is, is, is very precise, people naturally start exploring and they naturally start doing things, touching things, most of the time throwing things around. But, but that's the thing that I find fascinating about um, things like the, the Vive, where you really can walk around and you can, and you have these awesome controllers that 
uh, work really well, um, that you get that, that intuitive moment that people start to just doing things because it feels natural to them. And I think that is a very powerful um, aspect of, of, of VR that that can happen. Um, in, in the Sonar case, we the, the whole introduction was, was meant to like open up the space for the audience because it was a very, we did it in 2014 and it was a very, very early um, stage uh, of, of VR. Um, even now it is slowly coming into it, more people getting to know it and getting to know it. Um, so we really wanted to open up the space, say to people, okay, look, you can, you can look anywhere basically. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the linear, the, the linear experience. Yeah. I think we're, we're still in the really er early stage of VR with Sonar, but I, I'm, I maybe I wanted to know from, from, from all of the speakers, what, what do you think, you are all told us, but what do you think, Martin, for instance, what w might be the next step uh, for VR? Because every everybody's talking to VR, VR and it's a new hype, etc. But we, we're starting to understand a little bit what this new medium can bring us in, 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 in terms of storytelling and, and especially in terms of immersion uh, to be at the place where I never could be or to be with someone I could never never be together with someone. So I can gather experiences I could not get in my real life, which I think is only I say VR. Yeah, you, you can play ping pong in VR, but I can <laughs> play ping pong in real life as well. And I think it's more fun in real life than in VR. So hopefully. So I, I, I I'm asking myself, wh which, which, what is the special aspect of VR for you? Well, w w about the future of VR, I think, um, you know, we worked with Dane Herrickstead, who created the Screen Futures in Spielberg's Minority Report. He's a four Emmy Award, he won four Emmy Awards. He, he, he designed the Screen Futures when Tom Cruise, 10 years ago, you know, and uh, 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 what uh, Tom Cruise did in Minority Report. And Dane thinks, um, the next step, uh, well, let's talk about the glasses. They are the problem. Yes, it's very uncomfortable to, to have that. And maybe the next step are lenses or glasses like I have. So, so the problem now is they're very uncomfortable and heavy, and maybe you, 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 you can't uh, use them more than 10 or 15 minutes. So the next step, uh, Dane thinks, and, and, and I think too, is... Uh, that the, the, there is another product, not a product, uh, lenses or glasses which are very light and, and maybe if the, the chip you have inside your head uh, uh, in, in 10 years. And what I think about playing t uh, uh, tish tennis or uh, uh, wha whatever together, maybe you sit in, uh, in, uh, in New York and I sit in Zurich and uh, we uh, are meeting in a, in a hologram together and, uh, and, and playing a sport or having a glass of wine. So I really think this will also, also virtual reality will change to a social media platform where people uh, meet and play together. That would be my vision. Thank you. I also think that this uh, experiences of loneliness we have now at the moment, that this, this experience of the experiences of loneliness that they are just, that will be just a phase, these experiences of loneliness. I think later it will be more experience of, of community. Uh, I think this, this, full um, this full immersive experience with of this kind of being blind and walking around, I think we will laugh about this in 10 years. Also, maybe we will have something else. But I think it's very interesting that we have now this period of, of lonely experiences and we can work with that. But I think that will be something like a, sh a specific genre of the 2018 VR. We will laugh about this. I think later we will communicate, as you said, together. We will play games. We will have uh, other experience, of course. Um, uh, porno business, uh, torture business, it uh, always comes in mind when I do it. Uh, it there are also... Uh, a lot of risks because it's so high immersive. It's it's so creepy also. That's also the thing we want to ex experiment now. This this uh, 
this, this, this feeling that someone is saying to you, you are alone and there is no one helping you. Also this kind of alien feeling, no one will hear you when you shout because it's very creepy when suddenly the characters in this virtual reality say to you that you are alone. Also, and uh, of course we've all worked a lot with that specific effect because I think that's just an effect later it will not work in the same way as now. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think the, the social aspect is going to be um, really game changing. And that is what I find fascinating about the, about the ping pong, because it is the ping pong that can happen anywhere. And um, I saw the demo with one, I think it was one playing in New York and one playing in LA, but they meet in that virtual space. They have just this very rough avatar of, of themselves, um, which don't even resemble anything human really except for the shape but still those people who were thousands of kilometers apart intuitively started playing ping pong ping pong together and it worked out and i think that yeah funny enough the the most isolating um media experience we have uh, or the most isolating medium at the moment that we have um is maybe going to be the one the most connecting medium i think that's um that's a nice for the talk, thank you very much for the talk. Um, Martin, Dominic and Sam all being here. Um, I like to connect in this real world, I like real drinks. Um, at uh, 6.30 we have at the VIP tent, we have real drinks, uh, real talk, and we can connect in a physical and social way <laughs> and look <laughs> each other in the eyes. Thank you very much for your attention and see you in half an hour at the VIP tent. Thank you very much. <laughs>